Hey everybody, welcome to episode 20 of the Beer Enthusiasts. Chris tracked us down a doozy. The Bourbon County variants have made their way into full effect, into distribution. This was one that Chris was particularly excited about. Chris, what are we drinking? We're drinking Bourbon County brand Bananas Foster Stout tonight, which wow. was... You said it. The most intriguing one to me. Um, they're all they're all usually at least at least mildly interesting. They come up with some really good right. flavor combos. But I am known to be a sucker for like banana stouts in particular, um, and even like big beers with a banana character. So this this is what I gravitated toward. Um, hopefully, y'all were able to pick it up. If you pick up any Bourbon County, that's cool to drink along with as well. Um, and we haven't had it before either. We just wanted to get to it kind of right during Bourbon County season and see what we can come up with and see how much we enjoy yeah. this variant. So, yep. Um, some quick notes on the um, on the recipe. Thirteen point nine percent ABV. Uh, they they do list the hops that they use. That was really I thought that was uh, very interesting. Nothing else about <laughs> any of the no yeast or malt bill or anything, but Millennium hops. <laughs> For, for bittering, I assume. Uh, and then uh, obviously, you know, it's Bourbon County, so it's bourbon barrel aged. And this particular variant, had, they just say, has uh, bananas, almonds, and then cassia bark. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, cassia bark, sometimes it's referred to as like Chinese cinnamon. Uh, so you can maybe get an idea of that, of what um, that's going to kind of look like. But obviously, this is going to have, you know, some sort of, you know, base that's going to be able to, you know, provide lots of uh, lots of, you know, fermentable sugar or some sort of, you know, pale malt or something like that. Uh, it's going to have some chocolate malts, uh, maybe not, maybe not any roasted malt kind of depends on what brewers you talk to. I don't know a ton right now that are using, um, you know, any sort of roasted malts when they're already going to go into, um, into barrels, uh, where you can potentially, you know, pick up some character like that with some of those charred oak notes, uh, or smoke or things of that nature. So, um, usually just kind of sticking to like some of the, you know, um, you know, you know, an interesting grist of caramel malts or chocolate malts or things like that. Um, maybe some other things to give them, you know, some body like oats or, or whatever, depending on the, you know, on the brewer. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what uh, Goose Island does for um, other parts of the process where people are doing interesting stuff. Like, I don't know if they're doing longer boils or anything like that, uh, or what they're doing um, uh, in that regard. But, um, you know, lots of different creative things that you can think about doing. But, you know, something that's just become, you know, really, really popular is, um, you know, brewing beer with the understanding that a barrel is going to be one of the ingredients uh, that's part of the part of the process. And so rather than just saying, you know, because it's not just, you know, take your best beer and throw it in a barrel. Um, my understanding of when I first learned about Bourbon County is that the sort of base beer of Bourbon County is actually not all that good. And that it actually really needs the barrel, like it's really meant to go and you know really take on a lot of what the the barrel has to uh, has to offer, and that having it having it on its own is not exactly uh, um, appetizing. Um, but uh, enough about what it could be um, or what it could smell like. Let's let's dive in. I know you're already sneaking a couple of sniffs, as I Absolutely. would too. Absolutely, and it is oh, wow. just about as dark as night. By the way, it's got a little bit of a halo of a brown contour on the edge, but. Yeah, um, deep mocha brown head color yeah. obviously doesn't form a whole lot. That's really when you're getting into high gravity like this, it's really hard to keep CO2 in solution. And I've got my little snifter wow. here, good for good for smelling. And that smells really cool. It smells, uh, you know what? The very first smell I got was a light cinnamon character. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think if memory serves me correctly, cassia bark, is, you can think of as like a slightly less cinnamony cinnamon. Mm. Um, it's not quite as aggressive of a cinnamon note as you may be used to. And then the banana note I get big time, but you know what it smells like? It smells like underripe banana. Mm -hmm. to it me. really does, yeah. Yeah, it's just like not quite ready for breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, but there's some there's some great there is a there is some like underlying barrel in there. There is a little bit of like a vanilla character to me. It's almost like a little bit of like a creme brulee custard mm. kind of vanilla character. Yeah, so the I was almond getting character like is banana split. Yeah, banana split. Yeah, the almond. I was trying to think how is the almond flavor kind of you know weaving its way into this, and I think banana split uh, is a really you know great way to think about it. It's really I thought maybe if there was some barrel character, you can get some kind of 
you know, almond character from, uh, from barrels and from some age, but, um, this just really just has this kind of like just lightly toasted, almost raw almond, uh, kind of character. Yeah. And it's, I, I think to me, a, a signature note of the base, not that other big Imperial stouts don't have this, but to me, most of the bourbon County beers just have this like awesome fudgy aroma mm -hmm. so you know we've got all these yeah. pangs of the ingredients that were added but the current through the whole thing is like it's almost like fudge has been drizzled on all of those ingredients yeah absolutely yeah kind of like a really uh maybe not like a dark chocolate fudge but like a you know 70 70 percent you know kind of kind of area um i think even with the the Casilla bark is a really big, is a really big note, but I think the barrel's offering some other, um, some other additional, um, I'm getting a, you know, kind of a little bit of a hint of something kind of like an allspice bread, um, maybe a little bit of kind of like something resembling, um, you know, a little bit of ginger. Uh, I think that's also just the alcohol playing with the, you know, with the, with the cinnamon as well. Cinnamon is kind of a warmer spice. Ginger is something that can kind of provide some of almost that, like, almost like spice that's almost like, uh, um, you know, like wasabi, you know, kind of where it's like a little bit on the cooler side, um, you know, of heat. Uh, so I think those are kind of playing together to kind of give an impression, uh, of something like that. But, um, it's a little bit more complex than just, uh, um, than just the casilla bark, especially on the, uh, on the palate when everything else is kind of playing together. Oh my gosh. You absolutely nailed that. It is when you smell this beer, one of the only things that points me toward barrel aging on the aroma is that vanilla note. Um, it doesn't like smell harsh or like a, you know, a bunch of bourbon's been dropped on it or anything, but the palate is when that reveals itself. It is way more complex of an alcohol, a spicy alcohol note than just cinnamon. You could not be more correct about that. There's this unfolding, like, yeah, nutmeg, peppery, um, and there's a little bit of like really, really fruity ethanol character that's mm -hmm. kind of supporting all of that it's you know sometimes you get especially at 14 percent abv that alcohol can be like super spiky or feel incongruent with some of the flavors in the beer and i think it's like for how intense the alcohol flavor is it is so well integrated yeah and i think for a lot of people out there Cinnamon and and things like I think of why one of the reasons that you know I think Goose Island is smart for leaning towards something like you, like you said about you know cassia bark that it's just a little bit less intense of a cinnamon. Uh, to me, cinnamon for a lot of people is like salt. You can like take it to a certain point, and cinnamon is just like it, it's just the most incredible thing, and that you don't really need a lot of it. But once you go over the edge, there's no there's no wiggle room. Like it's just mm -hmm. you know it's just like salt. Once it's overly salty, then it just is like all you taste really is salt. And for some people, like there, there are some people who will not buy this beer because until they hear other people say that the cinnamon character is, you know, something that sounds like it's to their liking from a, a reliable cinnamon, <laughs> you know, cinnamon source that they know has maybe a similar, uh, you know, sort of a taste for, uh, for that. But it's, it can be a really uh, polarizing uh, ingredient. But when done really, really well like this, I was a little worried because I was like, if cin cinnamon's the dominant note again, like, is that going to be the case? uh, on the palate, but it's really playing well with all of the other barrel notes that are, that are in there. The underlying fudge, vanilla and banana character are providing sort of a contrast to that. Um, so it doesn't taste overly spiced, uh, in any way. So it's really, it's, it's really cohesive. It absolutely is. And I think, you know, I, I, I try not to look up too many reviews or whatever before we do beers like this, but it's always fun to see, to hear what people think of the whole Bourbon County lineup. And it seems all over the map with this one. Um, I've heard, mm -hmm. I, you know, I was reading some people say it doesn't have enough banana. Some people saying it was mm -hmm. too much. And, um, you know, I think it's on the like medium low side of banana. Once you're getting mm -hmm. into the flavor, it's really kind of supporting the body and um, reminding you of this kind of like lush creaminess, almost like a banana whipped cream um, kind of thing underneath there, but um, but I, it's definitely not too big. Um, yeah. I, but I say that as already a self admitted, you know, banana style lover. So yeah. you know, my gauge is my gauge is different than yours potentially. But I think it's like you said, it all feels really well integrated. And uh, and really, when I 
when I think about that, I think because you it kind of came to uh, this kind of came to mind when you were talking about kind of the banana split thing. You know, if I if I were having something like a banana split or something like this, if it was like, you know, a chocolate covered banana that had been, you know, rolled in all, you know, in crushed almonds and had all of these spices, you know, sprinkled on it. I would hope that the banana wasn't like high, high intensity, right? Like yeah. the banana's not always necessary. And so I think that's a smart thing that they've done is like, that's probably more of a realistic like banana experience is that it is kind mm. of medium low. And like you said, it's more of the supportive driver. Obviously when you're eating it, it's also just a vehicle, you know, right? So that's a, that's a big part of it also. But I think I think it's just a more realistic kind of dessert-like experience of what a banana is really going to you know, to provide to something like that. So it kind of almost seems like it's not too surprising. It's familiar. It just kind of makes sense. Maybe you don't really know why it does or why they're all, you know, all the flavors are sort of balanced this way. Um, but this is also how a lot of brewers get inspiration. You know, they like to try spirits and they like to try new desserts and new, um, you know, dishes or try things with different spices or different sauces and see what flavor combinations are working really well. Or even just, you know, for some people, it's just what's really popular right now. What are people ordering at? you know, restaurants for, you know, for dessert, especially with the pastry style craze. I think everybody's trying to stay on top of, uh, on top of that. Um, and I think this is this, to me, this is like somebody who has had bananas foster and this is the balance of flavors that they get from, uh, an experience like that. Yep. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> let's move on to, uh, yeah, the carbonation with, with, uh, with mouthfeel. Yeah, I mean, carbonation's like, you know, on the low side, certainly not still by any means, um, but it's it's quite, it's, you know, it's full-bodied. Uh, it's not, uh, it's got... There's just enough carbonation there to um, accentuate the spice character. I think that's helping mm -hmm. yeah. prop up a little bit of the spice character, but it's not, yep. you know, we're, we're this is way below the carbonation of your, your standard beer. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is super smooth for almost for pretty much fourteen percent uh, ABV. Yeah, the booze is not hiding, but there's a difference between it being like present versus spiky. It's it's a very smooth. You know, you you hear that word smooth tossed around a lot, particularly um, with whiskey, with bourbon and whiskey and stuff like that. When someone just says it's smooth, and what I think they mean most of the time when they say that is that there's just not like an undue alcohol burn, you know, that there's, it's very flavorful alcohol character. And I, I would compare that to this, you know, we're not even close to the um, proof of even your standard whiskeys here. So it's a little bit easier to be smooth in this context, but, you know, take it from a couple of guys that like this kind of stout. It's, that it doesn't seem easy to do. You can have barrel aged stouts all the time that are just like kind of a chore. Um, even if they're delicious and this one's not a chore to drink it's you know you're not going to put back a pint of it anytime soon but it's not a chore to drink it's very fun yeah. to drink absolutely well we've got a really big we've got a really big beer it's super intense when we when it comes to something like food pairing i i get asked about this you know quite a bit what do i pair with you know my you know banana pancake you know almond uh, barrel aged imperial stout honestly fair enough in my book fair enough to say this is this is dessert like does not mm -hmm. need a, an accompaniment does not need to be overly complicated with something else uh but we're studying for the master exam that's not an answer <laughs> that's, yeah that's right. just not gonna not gonna cut it they're gonna if anything this is a tough this is a tough pairing uh you know for an oral exam if i had to imagine one so what, what were you able to sort of, you know, parse out with everything? And also now that we've experienced it, now that we kind of have an understanding of what we're uh, dealing with, do you like your pairing? Or are you still good with what you've got? I think so. I was kind of anticipating that the banana wouldn't be like too preposterously big um, to complicate some other pairings. But, you know, if you're a fan of this show at all, you know that uh, we like our breakfast for dinner um, and that's kind of my cheater way of getting around the savory component because breakfast yeah. for dinner is not all, always savory. It's basically like dessert again. Um, but uh, I want to have this with French toast. Um, you know, yeah. it's a big beer, 
but it obviously is going to stand up to the maple. And I think the maple syrup on the French toast is going to be a really interesting um, thread through there. Less so than like a fluffy pancake breakfast or whatever. The French toast has got that, you know, egg wash and it's a little bit denser. It's almost a little bit creamier by itself. So we're getting some matching texture there, um, which is, you know, th this one's pretty matchy matchy. Um, you know, a sprinkle of cinnamon on your French toast is not foreign to most people. A um, <laughs> couple of slices of banana on your French toast, always a good time. And so, yeah, this is not the most creative pairing. Um, but I think if you made a pretty rich French, rich but simple French toast and let the kind of cinnamon, almond, and banana character be your, be your toppings on that, then um, that sounds like a good time to me. So my savory is not savory. It's sweet, but we're having French toast for dinner. How about you? I went with... Uh... Just I went with this because it's one of my go to pairings with um, like uh, like bigger like Weizenbach type beers that have a, you know, a relatively, you know, prominent, you know, isoamyl acetate banana character. And so I thought it could be potentially interesting with this, too, because this does have a lot of those characteristics. They're dialed up a little bit more. You know, it's not like the kind of more subtle kind of like clove character that you get from those beers. It's obviously much higher and more, you know, prominent. Um alcohol, but, you know, some similar kind of darker, um, you know, Maillard characteristics. Um, and I like, I like Ropa Vieja with something like that, just a really mm. fatty meat that's just been really slow cooked for a really, really long time, rich in flavor, uh, and some fried plantains, uh, just kind of some, you know, really classic Cuban food. I think, you know, I think the plantains are, you could maybe, again, kind of see that as a little bit of a, of a cop out, but I think it's, you know, you're not getting too matchy matchy because it's not really, you know, it's not technically a banana. I'm really happy that this turned out to kind of be more of like an underripe banana because it's going to add a little bit more of like a complexity and not turn into a, you know, sort of light cancels like. I don't want any, um, I don't really want any canceling. Um, but then again, I'm glad the, I'm glad the cinnamon part uh, is pretty prominent because that's going to be, that's always a really great contrast to, you know, these really deep, rich, savory, uh, you know, kind of slow cook meets some, you know, something like Ropa Vieja. It's just going to make that, you know, sort of come to life. Uh, and give it some and give it some brightness. So I really like that for um, uh, for a pairing. If you were getting super traditional and you made me include the you know kind of the kind of you know beans or beans and rice combo, I'm not sure how that would, how, that, how that would how that would play out. I do like roast. I do like roast uh, with um, with beans. Actually, I think earthy character with uh, with roast and coffee is actually really is actually has been a surprisingly good um, flavor match. I still need to kind of parse out why I think I like that, but. Um, you know, if I'm just having my my pick of the of the of the dish here, those are just those are just the two things that are getting served up. Yeah, well, and you get to pick. You're making the decisions yeah, here. So, exactly. <laughs> you know, Scott's making dinner. That's what we're having. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, and I like I like that too. It's um, you know, if you some people might think like, oh, a beer like this is just too intense for most dinners but if you if you know anybody or if you're a fan of having a dram of whiskey with a steak or whatever you know it's kind of you're, you're sort of like jockeying the intent with the intensity by not having a huge portion of this you have like this much mm -hmm. to go with yeah. your dinner and you're just kind of sipping it as you go along and that's a good way to kind of like meter down um mm. the kind of marathon intensity of a beer like this so I like that. That's cool. That's a that's a very decadent dinner treat. All right, I'll lead us off with uh, with the with the dessert. Um, so one of the desserts I really like making is sort of like a bananas foster um, butter cake. So kind of just making a, a base butter cake and then you know brewing some brewing some bananas you know with some you know in some rum you know do some flambéing, but. Didn't want to really have the bananas in there. Wanted to kind of let the beer be that part of it. So I thought, what could I put? Because I still want to keep the butter cake, the butter cake base. Um, you know, was was kind of hoping the vanilla would either be kind of something different. I hope it wouldn't be something that's too, you know, with the descriptor I had. And that's, you know, that's truly what I thought it, um, you know, what I thought it uh, it smelled like. But I would, uh, I saw my uh, spouse sent me a great recipe for, um, uh, like creme brulee cookies, but I thought if you could just take that base and put it on a butter cake, and so you just have kind of whatever would be that kind of custard, 
uh, vanilla, but you kind of turn that into the frosting and then you kind of just sprinkle over some sugar, you know, take the, you know, take the, you know, the, the little uh, torch to it and get it kind of that, you know, that crystallization that you do for creme brulee. And then for me, it's, it's uh, kind of the same thing that you did kind of reaching into, into breakfast to kind of bring this all together. I think then just sprinkle a little bit of bacon on top. I think that's going to really bring a lot of that together. <laughs> I know, right? Isn't that just, it's just as decadent as all get out. Just throwing yeah. something nice and nice and salty, you know, cut through some of this, uh, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of tannins, you know, from the, uh, so that could be maybe given an impression of uh, dryness, but, you know, some salt, something to start making you, you know, salivate a little bit, provide a little contrast in that, uh, in that regard. Bananas, bacon, chocolate, custard, butter cake. Uh, so yeah, the salt, yeah. the salt, to, the salt component, which is, you know, the meaty version in that case just really sets it off. Right. And just, yeah, that's going to and buttress and all the, the flavors that you're getting there. And even the cinnamon too, is going to play with that. Right. I mean, you can go to, you know, out here, we have a restaurant called lazy dog cafe and they've got, you know, candied bacon. That's, they literally just are just, it's just bacon and they just spread, you know, brown sugar on it. <laughs> so it's yeah. like. It, you know, you're just that with the the cinnamon character with the with the the bacon and just being another again. I think the cinnamon just creates a really nice bright contrast that you can just work with with these really really rich, uh, you know, dishes. Whether it's you know whether it's savory or whether it's sweet. All right, where did you land? Well, my immediate thought was somewhat similar to yours. I just gravitated toward butter. <laughs> um, which I think is just kind of like a luscious underpinning that the beer by itself is, it's not missing. You don't like need butter character in this yeah. beer. <laughs> um, but, but if you're like going to make a decadent pairing, um, I think butter is really going to bring this together. And so any number of like butter cakes, like you were saying, I think are going to be really supremely delicious with this. And I kind of took a left turn and, um, I just want to make a stout float with like a butter pecan ice cream. So yes. we're just, we're just incorporating it in there. We're just going to pour six ounces of this over a scoop of butter pecan ice cream. <laughs> and obviously just nuttiness on nuttiness is fine. We're going to be totally good there, but that just kind of like luscious buttery um, character is going to just soften some of those cinnamon edges. Um, you know, be such a kind of like fatty flavor underpinning to, you know, the banana character, the fudginess is going to make it even more fudgy. And so, and butter pecan ice cream reminds me of my grandma. So, um, uh, you know, uh, beer and food pairings about memories anyway. So yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. And then the other thing I thought, you know, you already kind of mentioned you're well within your rights to just have this for dessert. Uh, you can just pair it with a, you know, comfy socks and uh you know <laughs> your your favorite tv show but uh in the same way that you'd have like an after dinner coffee i think dropping a shot of espresso in this or like mm. infusing a cold brew and just having it as your after dinner coffee but with it's almost like you you got your after dinner coffee but you got a little bit of bananas foster on the side as well it's just incorporated into one so we've just infused it into the same drink it's not a you know, I kind of cheated. I just used the beer in two different after dinner contexts more so than paired it. But, you know, with a beer that's got all this stuff going on, I don't really mind that either. So you can just have it as a after dinner drink with some coffee or my little stout float, which I think would be fun too. I agree. This is something to play around with, something that's really fun and, uh, Something that's good to have with food. You're going to, this is almost 14%. You're going to want to have something in your stomach. So, and then just yeah. having, having, you know, just nice, uh, <laughs> just think, just alcohol brings you down. Capping brings you out. This is just enjoy the ride, everybody. <laughs> so yeah. Just, that's going to be, it. Just, <laughs> just evens your ride out. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> At least we hope it does. Yeah. We hope it's a, just a nice smooth ride. But if you're just like, there's the coffee, there's the beer. Oh, too much fun. So yeah, I uh, highly recommend this. Um, even for people, again, if you're, if you're kind of, if you're a little bit skeptical of, uh, of cinnamon or cassia bark or anything like that, uh, I think this is, uh, very well incorporated, very, very well executed. So, 
uh, purchase uh, purchase with confidence. So this gives me a lot of uh, kind of really want to go out and get the. Wasn't planning on necessarily getting the base this year, but might go out and uh, might go out and grab the the base beer just to see if it's uh, if I can kind of parse out what what some of the similarities were between the two. Yeah, uh, you know, um, not to dive too much into it, but I got to have a little pull of it on draft, and I think the base or the regular um, right. Bourbon County brand stout is just about as good as it's ever been. So. Wow. Okay. Well, you heard it. Uh, next week uh, we have uh, Kostritzer, so we'll be doing uh, we'll be doing a classic example of Schwarz beer. Uh, again, we say this a lot, but this is definitely another example where if you have a local brewery that's brewing this, uh, I would even say just go get that one. Go get it along with Kostritzer. But again, support people who are making uh, great styles like that. Uh, we don't want styles like that to um, to eventually go away. We want to make sure that they're around for a long time. So I were featuring one like this, uh, great brewery, uh, classic example, and really well distributed. Should be um, should be easy for uh, just about anybody to uh, to find. So hopefully uh, you'll be able to tune in uh, tune in with that. Um, with all that said, cheers everybody. Make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Instagram. We're at the Beer Enthusiasts. I'm the Vintage Beer Enthusiast. Chris is Fresh Beer Enthusiast. Uh, have a great week and uh, get some Bourbon County. Appreciate y'all. Cheers. Cheers.